If you're trying to make money online, you're on YouTube. You jump on, you search, how do I make money? How do I start a side hustle? And everyone is talking about Etsy, especially with the emergence of AI. All of a sudden, you could just type a few words into a computer program, AI spit something out, slap it on a wall, and you sell it as wall art on Etsy? Is that a sustainable business? Is that how this works? Is that how you free your life? No, honestly, it's not. And it kind of sucks to tell you guys, but a lot of those videos aren't going to be something that helps you build a business to free your life or so you can spend time with your kids or so you can go out and do those hobbies or whatever you wanna do. So today we're gonna to be talking about actual side hustles that can become full-time businesses that we've personally done. A lot of people are trying to get on the hype train of selling digital products on Etsy or getting that cash grab from selling wall art, templates, Budget AI. spreadsheets and yeah. like a bunch of other and stuff. And so I hopped onto this hype probably, I don't know, whenever 2015 was years ago, I made some money, maybe like $1,000 or around there. It was so exciting. I was really young. I had no responsibilities, no kids at the time. And so that felt to me like, hey, this is a taste of financial freedom. And so a lot of people will show their income reports. Hey, this is how much money I made on Etsy, or this is how much I made through selling like a quick, you know, reels cover photo. And everyone's like, I want to do that. I want to make $400. I want to make 4,000. And while that's cool, and I had that success as well years ago, it honestly fizzles out after after a period of time because you then have to jump on another trend and you have to constantly be on top of creating these cheap low ticket products that are just based around trends that you can't control. And so like I said, we've done all of the above. We've sold all of the products that you're probably looking up how to do right now. And right now we ended up on the other side of that. We do no longer sell really like lower ticket digital products. We do a lot of other things in our business. We hit our first seven figure year last year and we're able to work part time hours. We don't have to follow trends. We don't have to have AI create like some dog that people want to buy for like three bucks you know it's like a sustainable growing business year after year and so we're going to talk about these business models with you guys and share the ones that are most profitable to us as far as making what we say semi-passive income and what we would recommend for people that are looking to create a legit business that can actually scale but before we get into it make sure you like subscribe do all the usual stuff if you like to hear information like this about how to be able to build a sustainable business how to turn a side hustle into something that's full-time or to just make money to help support your family and your dreams. So the first one I've sort of already mentioned and touched on, but the core of our business and the most profitable part about our current business is selling digital products. So when people say digital products, again, they don't know. You know, people in my own life, they think, okay, maybe it's Canva templates or they think it's these super cheap checklists for meal mm -hmm. planning or it's an ebook. Yeah, e yeah. But that is not what I'm talking about. We're talking about legit online courses. And it's funny because one of our students were like, should I do this? You know, they were second guessing it. And they're like, I heard from someone else that course are oversaturated or they're dead. When people come in and they say that courses are oversaturated or dead, I have to laugh. laugh. Okay, I can't laugh in their face about it. We almost maybe we have over to hold Zoom. Our, hold I'm ourselves just back. <laughs> but in reality, the thing is, is that people just don't understand that courses are an informational product that people are willing to pay for basically at all times. Yes. I mean, think about it. People pay for school. People pay for training. Yeah, people not pay for certifications. Anywhere. People pay for a lot of things to learn. And so courses are not dying. It just means that that person probably isn't innovative or believes in anything, to be honest. That's almost like saying, oh, there's too many fitness YouTubers and I can't squeeze mm -hmm. myself in. I'm not unique enough. Yeah, if you create a course that's been done 100,000 times and you're not a unique, what I hate to say, influencer or content creator, whichever, you know. A unique person. Yeah, then it's gonna be hard for you to sell your course, but that's a you problem. That's not mm -hmm. like a course industry problem. I mean, it's true. So the reason that you might be kind of confused right now when we're saying, hey, we don't recommend digital products, but we recommend digital products. True. Haley is just saying that we don't recommend selling things for a dollar, five dollars, or even ten dollars on Etsy. When you sell something on Etsy, you're relying on the Etsy algorithm. You're not relying on your face. You're not relying on your brand. Yeah. You're not relying on your personality. You're not relying on your story. Those are core components to building a lifelong sustainable business that Etsy just can't provide. Yeah. Etsy is all price competitive. And basically who has the most reviews, who can fit the most dog stickers into a pack, you know? It's like so, Amazon. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so that's why we recommend digital products, but not on Etsy, mm -hmm. okay? And some people might even call these information products, yeah. okay? We're selling information in various ways, but it's information that helps people to make a change in their life. And I think another reason why people latch on to the whole Etsy hype right now is because they think, well, I don't need an audience. You know, only my dog follows me on my Instagram account and I have no online presence. Like I'm not charismatic and I'll answer all the limiting beliefs, but trust me, you're going to have way more issues trying to sell to people that don't know anything about you. And also
also dealing with things like price competition, trends phasing in and out, like that business model, in my opinion, for digital products specifically, it's not something that you can really like pull, turn the levers on or however you would say that yeah. as far as like making more sales year after year. It's almost just like, Fingers crossed, I hope I can pick a winning product. And so the power of actually even having a small influence, and when I say small on social media specifically, like 100 people, 200, I know that seems like I'll make no money. Mm -hmm. I promise you, you're gonna make more money in the long run. And when I say long run, I just mean like six months, like six months of hard work on your whatever social media platform, you know, talking about your products, talking about your story, giving people advice, sharing hacks or how to's, even if you're not some type of charismatic content creator, I'm an extreme introvert. So is he, mm -hmm. but yet you can learn it. You can learn a new skill, just like you can learn how to tag your you know, products properly on Etsy yeah. or whatever the heck or that you do. Or taking pictures or things yeah. like that. And you know, I heard somebody say it this way. If you have a hundred, 200, 300 followers. Okay. Imagine that you're sitting in your room and you had a yeah. hundred, 200, 300 people walk into your room. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's actually a lot of people that if you have a product or offer ready for them, it's a lot of opportunity yes. to be able to sell. And so you can't think of it as like a, I have no one to sell to, so I need to go hop on Etsy where I really don't have someone to sell yeah. to, or there's a 500 people, but there's also 500 sellers in the room. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of backwards thinking yeah. in that sense. You're limiting yourself to selling against a bunch of other people mm -hmm. if you rely on Etsy. So let's say that you don't want to sell an informational product. You want to make a course or something like that, or you know, you're kind of concerned about, for some reason, like you're going to be one of the only five other people in the world selling a course topic or something. Yeah. I get it. That's totally fine. Maybe you want to start with something that you're a little bit more comfortable with, or maybe you like talking directly to people. People. Another side hustle that you can start that's super profitable, that's withstood the test of time and yeah. will continue to withstand the test of time is consulting. So here's how, before you're like over my dead body, am I gonna <laughs> do my eight to five jobs? A lot of you guys who are watching this, just like we were, you know, uh -huh. seven or whatever years ago, he was working full time. I had just become a stay at home mom. And if I had looked up online at the time and saw someone telling me to do consulting, I, and him too, it's so like he wants to come home and veg out cause it's draining uh -huh. working an eight to five rat race life. I wanna come home and play video games at the time. I wanted to watch The Real Housewives. Like I didn't wanna have to go talk to another human being, you know, after being with kids all day whatever so i know you guys are like heck no this video is not for me you're probably clicking away but i'm telling you like if you want a legit sustainable business like we're in our 30s now we have nearly four kids one on the way and we need something that's going to replace our income in 12 months or less that's what we've always looked for and the people that just grab at these like little side hustle things that claim that they're passive income they're the people that are still working eight to five ten years from now because they don't learn the skills that are actually going to free them from their job so i actually worked in a marketing agency and I know some people would be like, oh, Doug has experience, whatever. No, no. It, it's nothing like that. Okay. But here's the deal. I'm working at a marketing agency with a portfolio of over a million dollars in clients. You were. Am I getting paid a million dollars? No, I'm not getting paid a million dollars. That's not how that works. But the moment you move to consult for yourself, the moment that you can take whatever knowledge you already know, whatever skills you already have to help other people and apply that to yourself, you get to take home 90% of whatever is being charged, right? And so that's why we like consulting because what you can do is you could just take what you're already doing and just turn and just do it on your own for somebody else. Or it's maybe it's an older skill that you have, or maybe it's a hobby that you have. You can really consult on anything. I mean, people nowadays consult on stuff like growing farms, raising yeah, animals. Fun Pe things. People consult on yeah. video games. There are like video yes. game consultants and coaches out there helping people so their kids don't get smashed on Fortnite and they get made fun of in school. And they make a lot of money. Yeah, they make yeah. a ton of money doing that. So consulting is a thing and it doesn't have to be to businesses. You don't need to have 1500 clients. Mm -hmm. All you need to do is just charge enough so that way you can quit your job. And then once you can do that, then you can scale it to however you want. And the other reason we bring this up is because like we kind of mentioned in the beginning, we help people create online courses, digital products, make that semi-passive income or whatever we want to call it. And so we'll have a lot of clients come into our program and they're actually already consultants. Like yep. they don't call themselves that, but when we ask them, Hey, how much money are you making? And how many followers do you have? They nearly always have less than a thousand followers, but they're making already like five, $10,000 a month because they take home probably 99% of the profits because it's just done through the internet. You know, yep. you don't need like expensive programs to teach another mom how to lose postpartum baby weight. Yep. You just need your time. And so again, this probably for me at least and for Doug, it's not gonna be the end goal. The end goal is to obviously take yourself out of the business, maybe sell the business or get someone else to run it for you, which is like where we're headed. But if you want to, again, replace your actual income in a really short time span, you're going to have to sacrifice a little bit and just look towards that end goal. So once you do have like your first couple consulting clients, you can replace your job. And this is what we did. This is what 
a lot of our students do. They eventually quit their jobs and then they turn it into an online course or they turn it into a mastermind, a group coaching program with like a cohort of students sometimes. And so you get more of your time back, but you can still make a lot of money in the short term. So this next one is what I might consider the most lucrative side hustle slash path to a full-time business yeah. that we've done and that we actually currently do right now. And that is high ticket coaching. Now, before you guys run, because you've heard all the people in front of the Lambos, in front of the bookcases, you probably got an ad before this video talking about high ticket coaching. If you have YouTube on your app, whatever people are talking about, right? <laughs> high ticket coaching is something that makes a ton of money and does not require a ton of experience. It doesn't actually require yes. really any following at all. That in itself is true. And now you might be also asking what's different between consulting and actually doing high ticket coaching. Well, consulting a lot of times is actually doing the work for people. Yes. Okay. I'm going to consult you. I'll tell you about it. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. And then I might actually implement that work and actually do it for you. Right. Kind of like having a direct client in a business, but in a high ticket coaching, it's actually a more hands off structure, which is more of your time in terms of teaching or talking. And so there's usually like a course involved. You can coach a lot of people all at the same time instead of just one person to one person all the time. And a lot of times you end up having things like group coaching calls, or you have things like uh, communities that are online where people can interact and talk with each other instead of just like I said, being a one person kind of deal. So again, you guys are probably thinking, well, how do I get like high ticket sales? Like how do I get people to pay me? And when we say high ticket, we mean even if it's 1000, it's all subjective, right? Mm -hmm. So for us, we kind of think high ticket sales requires a zoom call. It requires a sales call most of the time, unless you're like a big time influencer, which most of us aren't. It's like a $3,000 in a package and you do some one-to-one, -one. like he said, you might have a mastermind involved. And so you might be thinking, how do I get these people? Obviously you guys know if you follow me at all, it's through social media. Okay. Through mm -hmm. posting consistently on a regular basis, you know, and showing your authority in one specific niche and also like a sub niche. So for instance, fitness, but like fitness for postpartum moms is always my go-to example. Yeah. And so we used to think the same things as you guys. We used to think, okay, we can't do it. We're not good enough. We don't know enough. We're not like some, we have pictured like a 50 year old man that's like buttoned up with a, suit, a suit and he's yeah. a consultant and yeah. he does high ticket. And he makes a lot of money. Yeah. Absolutely not. You guys would be floored if you knew the types of people, what they look like, their background, their age, and how much money they're charging to teach basic stuff. Okay. So let me give you guys some examples because we were in a mastermind, I think last year mm -hmm. where we all got on a group zoom call. We said how much money we made, so what was our niche? We had to talk about what our niche is, how much our product costs, how much we were doing and like what our goals were for the year that we're there. Yeah. And one of the students there, she was a lady who teaches Japanese natives yeah. English so that they can get jobs in America. And this is okay. so unique. So unique because what yeah. she did was she found a specific target person that had a goal in mind. She found that Finding somebody jobs. wanted to be able to find a job in America that knows Japanese and there's a specific path for that. Mm -hmm. And what was amazing was I've never heard of this lady. No. I had no idea who she was. She didn't have a huge following, no. less than a thousand followers online and was making six figures through high ticket coaching yes. and high ticket offers. And what was even wilder to me being like a former full-time YouTuber with my husband, Doug, a couple years ago is she was just a person that was on YouTube. I was going to say YouTuber, but she wasn't, I mean, what does that even mean? It means kind of like your full-time YouTuber. Mm -hmm. She was not, and she is not. She's just a person that really only posts on YouTube, yeah. maybe like twice a week. Yeah. And so throughout being consistent and showing her authority on specifically YouTube, but also that combined with actually charging what she's worth and getting people real results results, she can make six figures with a small audience. So a lot of you guys are going to want that same type of success like this Japanese woman. But if you're charging again, like $197 and expecting people to just randomly pay you through a sales page, mm -hmm. it's a little more difficult. You know, she's able to convince people about why her program mm -hmm. is going to work for them. And she talks to them one-to-one. -one. And so it obviously isn't passive. It's none of this is passive, a lot of it. But again, we're talking about legit business models for people that have real responsibilities, like I said and who want to make it happen like six figures or more in under a year. So I know that we're not covering it exactly in this video, but if you do want the exact steps to learn all about that, we actually have a free training that you can check out in the down in the description below. It's our zero to 100K in 12 months or less with Digital Products Challenge. I promise you it has a ton of value. Everyone loves it. Everyone executes off of that and they're able to go off and start their own thing. So 100% if you're looking for that, Go down, check it down in the description below. The next one we want to mention is still really profitable. This was the one business model that allowed Doug over here, my husband, to basically replace his full-time job in less than a year. And it's going to sound amazing, but there's a catch. There's a big catch. Big catch, yeah. And so he did that, and that was selling Amazon FBA, which I feel like has sort of died down like the hype. Yeah. You did a couple viral videos on it. Mm -hmm. We'll put them there. You know, if you guys want to hear his experience about how we lost $15,000, putting it into the business, then yep. remade it back. Yep. It was successful, but 
What yeah. are your thoughts? No, it was definitely successful, but I would almost compare, and I know that I'm going to offend a lot of people right now that do Amazon FBA, but I would almost say Amazon FBA is like just a real life Etsy. The way this works is, or I guess Etsy digital products. Yeah. Because with Etsy digital products, you're very price competitive. You know, you have to watch out for your competitors. You got to hide your products. You can't see your products online. It's the so same true. thing yeah. with Amazon. When you're selling on Amazon, if somebody hears that baby car seat covers are the next thing, that was our what product. we sold, yeah. if they hear that's the next thing, everybody floods the market with baby car seat covers. And then what happens is things become price competitive. And what actually happened with us was our manufacturer saw how well we were selling, snatched our product design, and then actually resold it themselves at a lower price and you get priced out. So yeah. the big catch here with Amazon FBA is that you need to find a very good product, a product that's not gonna be price competitive, a product that's not super trending and like hot and everybody wants to do. And it needs to be a product that you have, you can, sell for more than like five or ten dollars and it's actually a lot harder than people might think to build a sustainable yeah. full-time amazon fba business. decades long business like when we think about choosing a business model it's like can we do this for more than 10 years because i've yeah. been at this online thing for nearly a decade never thought i mean i assumed i'd be doing it but mm -hmm. when you actually look oh my gosh i've been working online for nearly 10 years your brain starts to think, well, what can I do for 20 years? Uh -huh. And so that's how you have to think. We have a lot of, I guess, online friends that made a lot of money with Amazon FBA people that we follow, people that we've talked to in groups before. And it's not that they're no longer doing it. They still make the passive income. It's pretty passive uh -huh. once you, you know, work everything out with your manufacturer, yeah. have a good relationship. You see the famous woman that was like, you know, making millions of dollars off of wool dryer balls, yeah, dryer balls. or something. Yeah, yeah. Wool, yeah, yeah it's like well, yeah, mothballs or something. Yeah, something she's like, that. like yeah. a mom of, in her, you know, know during nap time made millions i'm like okay yeah. but maybe she's still selling the dryer balls that's yeah. probably outdated but maybe not the, the way it works but though, they pivot yes but yeah see the thing is that you don't just start making million dollars during nap time no. like you don't start that way you build your business to that level yes. that's the little secret though the bad thing that nobody wants to talk about it's like the elephant in the room that big old thing that you can't yeah. ignore is that people work their way up to this level of success with lots of cash with lots of cash lots of capital yeah. lots of ad spend lots of marketing yes. lots of research and lots of failures yeah okay and nobody ever talks about that mm -hmm. which is why while amazon fba or you know just selling on amazon in general is is great and it can make you a ton of money to us there are just a lot more cons that nobody really talks about anymore so the next i guess side hustle i hate that word we use it for the algorithm but you guys know <laughs> none of these are side hustles so they're here's, like here's the secret yeah yeah full-time like, gigs uh -huh. and if you want to make them full-time gigs they have to become that almost in your mind at least yeah. um and so this is being an influencer specifically a youtuber so we did this for nearly two years as full-time youtubers we made 80 percent of our income through sponsorships i guess the rest would be like adsense i wasn't a big time youtuber I'll show you guys my other channel and know a lot of you guys don't know what that is, but I started documenting my experience doing motherhood vlogging, whatever you want to call it. I'm a typical mommy vlogger. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And so while a lot of people would think, oh, that's not for me, you don't have to pick obviously that niche, but there are so many students that we work with currently that are making, I mean, 400, 500, $700,000 a year, a million dollars a year being YouTubers. This is an obvious one. You're like, I don't want to do that, whatever. But again, if you combine being a YouTuber with any of the other ones, even honestly selling Amazon, Amazon, not that we recommend it anymore, but digital products, consulting, high ticket coaching. It is like a sweet match made in heaven. Mm -hmm. Speaking of like the Japanese woman that like sold her stuff through YouTube, because yep. we're not talking about just being a YouTuber. We have a lot of influencers that come in and even especially TikTok is not as lucrative as some people mm -hmm. think. Short form content platforms like Instagram, obviously. We have them come in, they have massive followings. We ask them how much money they make. What do they say? Little to none, man. And it's actually really rough because the reason why they're coming to us is because they understand that just the platform, just the ad the sets, audience, just the ad revenue, yeah. just the audience there isn't going to make the money alone, mm -hmm. okay? It's not enough to make it alone. Not so, enough. Yeah. Not they, a, they do make some. Yes, they yeah. do, but it's not enough to be able to make a life-changing mm -hmm. amounts okay you can't make life-changing moves on just a couple thousand dollars a month especially when there's a risk of an algorithm changing yeah. or something might be happening so you need to support that or you need to be able to add to that another piece of the puzzle which you know would be one of those things that we've talked about in this video so far so a lot of people assume okay i'll just become the youtuber first i will grow a massive audience this is what i did for five years wasted millions of dollars flushing it down the toilet because i didn't understand about the perfect harmony of selling your own products selling something that isn't just sitting on your hands like i say waiting for brands to bless your inbox say hey can we sponsor you three thousand dollars no that that requires a massive audience and years of sacrifice 
sacrifice if you're so lucky to be one of the 1% of YouTubers that don't burn out. It's really tough on your life. Like even right now, we have a nanny watching our kids. We have to set up the lights. We got to get an editor. It is time consuming, mentally taxing. And so you have to see a promise of an ROI within like at least a couple months if you have real life responsibilities or your spouse is going to look at you like you're crazy. <laughs> unless you have a very supportive spouse. But even that, it's like, it's really taxing on your family yeah. life. That's why we would say YouTuber, but combine it with something else. So the last one here might actually kind of surprise you because it is on the list of side hustles that people tend to do, and that's affiliate marketing. But here's the thing, okay? One, we're not talking about Amazon Associates. We're not talking about making a couple dollars while you peddle your TV or whatever it is that you put in your list of 800 things down in your YouTube description. Okay, we've done that. We still have affiliate stuff, but a lot of the affiliate marketing that people do nowadays should be around high ticket affiliate marketing, which yeah. means I'm doing things like I'm an affiliate for a coaching program, an affiliate mm -hmm. for an online course. I'm an affiliate for something that's gonna pay me 100, 200, 500, or even a thousand dollars per referral instead of something that's just pennies. So for instance, you know, you probably see these big YouTubers or big influencers. And like he said, they have like a ton of different links. This was me for like six years online. And I could honestly, with my large audience, I have over 180,000. That's probably how much I have on YouTube subscribers. You'd think, you know, that's a lot. I have videos with millions of views and like hundreds of thousands of views. I probably only made probably right below six figures with affiliate marketing. Now, granted, I didn't push it like some fashion influencers that are like, buy my shirt Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, buy it in all the colors, buy this, buy that, buy that. It's more of just like a natural thing to do because that in itself is a full-time job. Well, hundred percent. Even if you're doing camera equipment and you're a dude and you're like, you like this lens, you, you have to buy all the products, you know? Yeah. And you have to rely on growing a massive audience because it really does pay pennies. And so now the way that we think, again, is longevity, business models that require really little work. We homeschool our kids. We want to have a life. Like we're not about the hustle culture. We want to work 20 hours a week between the both of us, call us lazy. And that does not reflect with the affiliate marketing traditional models. So what he's talking about here is like growing some type of audience, having some pull with your influence, even like 50 people, a hundred people. And like you said, like selling something that is a natural reflection of what you're talking about. Yeah. So you need to pick something that's a more specific niche. You can't just sell the things around your house. Unless like Haley yeah. said, you are a tried and true influencer with millions of views yeah. because those millions of views don't always translate to millions of clicks, right? No, but yeah. if you have 100, 500, 1000 people that follow you and you talk about very specific high cost things, that affiliate marketing is something that can be a legitimate side hustle that eventually as you build up a following, as you look into being a YouTuber, as you look to do something else and you continue to do high ticket affiliate marketing, it can turn into something that's a little bit more. So for example, we have a student that makes a ton of money past, like this is truly in my opinion, nearly passive income, not hundred percent, nothing is. She teaches people how to have a homestead, whatever that is, like how to garden, how to milk your cow, how to make sauerkraut. And so she talks about other homesteaders courses that are a natural reflection of maybe, you know, her content, she's not willing to sell a cheese making course. So she'll link an affiliate link for a cheese making course. And so that really adds up at the end of the yeah. month because the courses themselves are not, again, the $3 mug, like you said, they're a couple hundred dollars and she gets a 10 or sometimes 20% commission. And also with those products, the more product that you sell for somebody, the more they're willing to boost yep. your percentage commission. And so that's probably where I would go with affiliate marketing for us. It's literal tools. I mean, if you look at our just YouTube description, not to be lame or anything about it, but we do have affiliate links that are in there around things like Kajabi, which gives yeah. you a pretty, a pretty nice commission mm -hmm. that's there. Um, there's also like active campaign, which is email. A lot of the tools that we use in our business are affiliates. So they have affiliate programs for those products and those pay five, 10, 15 times more than what Amazon Associates yeah. will. So that's pretty much it for the most lucrative side hustle that we are, have done that are tried and true. If you guys get value from this video, subscribe, comment down below if you've tried any of these, if you have any that are better, we'd love to go back and forth with you and we'll see you in our next one. Bye guys.